and welcome to another edition of The Locker Room, where the BS stops and the analysis starts. We are your three hosts, Kyle Anderson, and with me always... It's Brandon Jones, and my swag is turned all the way off. Matt Hirsch, here jamming in the locker room. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the upcoming bowl games, and also going to recap the 2012 college football season, and also give our predictions of what we think is going to happen going into next year. Tonight, basically, we're just going to tell you, if we think it's a bad bowl game, we'll tell you it sucks. If we think it's good, we'll tell you it's good. And we're going to cap it at the end with the big one, the national championship game in Miami, Florida, between Alabama and Notre Dame. Real quickly, guys, before we get into this, what have you thought so far about the bowl matchups? Brandon? Um, pretty good. Uh, some decent bowl matchups. I'll be the first person to admit, to admit I haven't watched a bowl game yet, besides the one that's playing in the background, and uh, this is the Beef O'Brady's. Yeah, Beef O'Brady's Bowl down in Tampa. Um, have you I'm ever a, been to a Beef O'Brady's? Yes, I have. They're I, pretty good. I've never been to one. We were talking about it earlier. Yeah, it's one over on 150. You should try it out. Oh, okay. Well, all I can say is I'm just glad they're sponsoring it and not Tampax. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to go to that bowl. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. We're going to go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to start with Matt, because one of the things I wanted to ask Matt before we get started, is there any one of the bowl games that we're going to discuss tonight outside of the BCS, any one of them that you really think, okay, that's the one I'm going to watch? Outside of the BCS? Um, you know, probably the Alamo Bowl, um, Texas and Oregon State. There's nothing really riding on it, but it's too... Uh, interesting stories. Texas was probably down more than they wanted to be this year. Uh, Oregon State, you know, had a good year, saved Mike Riley's job. And the Alamo Bowl, Bowl to me is just one of those games outside of the SEC being involved, outside of the, the BCS, that's really just always a fun game to watch. You know, there have been some thrillers. It's really, you know, good matchups with the, the Big 12, Little 12, whatever you want to call them now, and the Pac-10, 12, whatever they are now. And it's always a fun matchup. You know, there's usually some nail biters, usually, you know, overtime games. So it's a fun game to watch. I think this one will be too. Brandon, what do you think? Uh, first thing that comes to mind is probably going to be uh, LSU and Clemson. Um, yeah, that'll be a good one. I always watch the Rose Bowl. Uh, the Capital One and the Citrus Bowl are two bowls that I uh, try to catch. Um, and this is one that's kind of going on under the radar, but how about uh, Oregon and Kansas State in the Fiesta Bowl? Two one-loss teams that very well, you know, a bounce here or there. I know for Oregon, and they're playing in a national title game. I think it would be more fun with that one if, I don't know why, Kansas State just doesn't have a name splash to it. And I don't know why, because they're a great team. You know, whenever Snyder's been there, they've always been really good. But for some reason, you know, Kansas State just doesn't get your get the juices flowing to, to watch them for some reason. They never have. I, I don't know why. And it, it's it, it's the name. I mean, that's really Kansas it. Kansas State, yep. Um, you look at them, over the years, they've played some quality football. I remember when they had Michael Bishop and, and Aaron Lockett and some, some of those guys back in the, the late 90s. They've always been always been a talented team, but it's just that name. Well, see, and you know, we were talking about, I was talking about the Alamo Bowl earlier. You know, it's fun seeing Texas in this game. Um because they're not in a BCS game, obviously. But I remember uh, many years ago of just a game that was probably my favorite bowl game outside of an SEC team, and it was Texas versus Washington in this game. Mm -hmm. And Major Applewhite ran, uh, led Texas to a just a roaring comeback uh, to win the game. So, um, you know, this should be a, a pretty fun one, too. We're going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, first game we're going to talk about December 24th, Christmas Eve. It's going to be the Hawaii Bowl in Honolulu. We've got the SMU Mustangs taking on the Fresno State Bulldogs. Um, big thing about this is SMU's final game in Conference USA. As everybody knows, they're going to the Big East next year. And Fresno State, this is their first year in the Mountain West, and they're conference champions. Mm -hmm. How do you all feel about this game? Is it important? Is it, eh? I won't watch three minutes of it. Uh, if ESPN is smart before and after the game, they'll play their 30 for 30 Pony Excess uh, just to drum up a little bit of excitement around it because, hey, SMU's still coming back. They're still making bowl games again. But other than that... Making them at 6 and 6. 
Okay, that's true. And a horrible conference USA. Conference USA is way down this year. And I and I really thought SMU was going to win Conference USA, but man, how wrong I was. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> December twenty sixth, we got the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. That's going to be in Detroit at Ford Field. Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers, and Central Michigan Chippewas. Fun way to celebrate Boxing Day that you know with the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. <laughs> so I, I think that this will be interesting because of, of Western Kentucky because of the year that they've had. Um, you know, they beating Kentucky, having a great year in uh, in the Sun Belt. So I, after Alabama played them, I've been interested to see how they they've been doing. So. I might try to catch a little bit of this one. I want to see how Western Kentucky is going to respond uh, losing Willie Taggart to South Florida. Right. Um, he he brought that program uh, to the point where they were, uh, you know, competing, uh, going to bowl games. Uh, I think this is going to be their second bowl game in a row. And Western Kentucky took a hit once they left uh, FCS where they were, you know, a national title team. And made that jump, and he kind of got them in that that mode where they were winning. We're going to see how they respond uh, with Willie Taggart going down to Tampa, Florida, to coach the Bulls. And then Central Michigan, this is their fourth Little Caesar Bowl in a row. I don't know if that's, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's glad they're going to. They've been to four bowl games. It's kind of like a home game for them, yeah, isn't it? pretty, pretty mm-hmm. much. But one and two, so they've only won one time. So we'll, that one. It'll be kind of okay to watch if you've got maybe, nothing to maybe, do. Maybe it's not like a home game. <laughs> exactly. Now, December 27th, we got three bowls going on. We've got the Military Bowl. That's going to be played at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. And we got number 24, San Jose State Spartans, taking on the Bowling Green Falcons. This guy's a 10-2, and two, San Jose State's best season in school history. Didn't their coach go somewhere? Yeah. Um, he actually took off to... Don't quote me on this. But he did take off. So now there's another team that's going to have somebody else stepping in as an interim coach. Yeah. I mean, does that hurt them? Does that help them? Or does it really even matter when you're playing Bowling Green? Uh, With San Diego State, um, a lot of people, when Stanford played them uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, with San Jose State, when Stanford barely got by them, people started questioning What's wrong with Stanford? Did Andrew Luck make that much of a difference? But as the season progressed, we saw how well San Jose State, how how well they played, how good of a football team they were. So I'm really interested to see not only um, San Jose State, because I haven't watched them much this year, but how will they respond being in the bowl game, uh, losing a head coach? Uh, just how they're going to respond. I'm, I'm really interested in that. Matt, do you think this is a game that – would kind of grab your attention, or you think, uh, it's one I may glance at, but I'm not going to stop my night to watch it. Um, well, it's, it looks like it is, it's not really a night game. It's more of an afternoon game, so I'll probably be working <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see. I, I don't, I think it'll be interesting to see, like we were talking about, like Brandon was talking about, how they'll bounce back with, a, you know, a coach leaving and with, uh, you know, with them having such a successful season. Well, now the next game later on in the evening at six thirty, it's the Belk Bowl in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's got the Duke Blue Devils at six and six taking on the Cincinnati Bearcats at nine and three. Now, Cincinnati, as we all know, finished in that four way tie mm-hmm. for the Big East title. Duke, this is their first bowl game since nineteen ninety five. So, I mean, I may watch this game because I want to see how Duke does. But Cincinnati, another situation, got an interim coach. Yeah, Butch Jones, you know, going down to Tennessee. Um, you know what? If 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 I scroll by it, I'll you know take a peek. But it's not one of those things I just have to watch. This one seems interesting to me just because I, I've tried to follow the career of uh, of David Cutcliffe, um, just because he's from this area, uh, Birmingham, where we record our show. So it'll be interesting to see how Duke does. Uh, I'm really happy for them because he, uh, you know, that's a program that they're trying to build the right way, I, I think. And it's interesting to see Cincinnati because uh, they're going to be without a coach again, um, and see what all they can do with Tommy Tuberville coming in. So, um, and by the way, I just looked it up here a few minutes ago. We were talking about San Jose State with that previous bowl game, the Military Bowl. 
their coach, Mike McIntyre, went to Colorado. Mm. Aha. So, now the game that's going to wrap up on December 27th, it's going to finish all the bowl games that day, the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, California. you got the Baylor Bears, 7-5, and five, going to another bowl game after RG3. So, there is life after RG3. Taking on number 17, UCLA Bruins, 9-4. and four. How good do you think it points to Jim Mora did as the coach, and how much of it was, no, Rick Neuhauser was just a horrible coach, and he always had talent? Wow. Wow, that's a tough question. Well, you have to look at it like this. UCLA is doing very well. Look at the amount of young talent that UCLA has. A lot of the talent that their the quarterback was a uh, red shirt freshman, um, they, they 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 had some talent, but a lot of the talent that's contributing this year is young talent. So I think you can you have to give Mora Jr. some credit. Uh, no one thought that UCLA would be this good uh, this early, and if it wasn't for you know uh, a loss, uh, missed field goal uh, up there on the farm, and they would be in the BCS game right now. The thing with UCLA, you know, I think Rick Neuheisel was a good coach. I really do, because he did very well at Washington. He did very well at Colorado. Uh, I think that he was a heck of a recruiter, which, you know, helped Moore Jr. Mm-hmm. step in this year. I think the thing with Neuheisel is he had a lot of baggage, which really hurt him. And it's kind of a perfect storm in Southern California right now, in Los Angeles, with uh, USC being under sanctions and uh, Lane Kiffin kind of being uh, a head case, I guess, a, a little oh, bit. Yeah. Um, but this is this is a fun game. This one I'm looking forward to watching because the time of day that it is, it'll be easy to kind of catch before you're going to bed. Um, it'll be fun to watch, especially if you like offense, because I don't think there's going to be much defense in this one. Well, and to quote Brandon from earlier this year when we posed the question, would there be life after Robert Griffin III? And Brandon said yes, because they've got a good quarterback. they still got a good offense. Number one in the country. Averaging 579 yards a game. C. Strunk. Remember him? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. How's their coach still there? How's Baylor's coach still at Baylor? Art Brow? Yeah, how's he still at Baylor? I think Art Brow is one of those coaches that has been tagged as he's a great coach running the system, but when you look at it traditionally, even when he was at Houston, Art Brow's teams aren't particularly known for playing defense, and the jury's still out whether you can get away with that in the BCS conference. So that's why the pressure is going to be on Sonny Dykes out in Cal because he's faced that same problem at La Tech. Can't stop anyone. Now, December 28th, we got three more bowls. We've got the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. you got the Ohio Bobcats at 8-4 and four coming out of the MAC, taking on Louisiana Monroe Warhawks at 8-4, and four, and first winning season – for Louisiana Monroe since they joined the FBS in 1994. That's kind of surprising to me because they've been a giant killer before. So it's surprising that this isn't their first. That, surprising that this is their first winning season because, like I said, they've you know beaten the Alabamas of the world and the Arkansas of the world you know before. So the fact that they could put it all together this year is impressive. It's great for them. To me, this game is going to be known as number one. How the hell is Frank Solich still in Ohio? At Ohio. <laughs> The guy has been winning at Ohio yeah, but since he got there. I, I think that the, the big-time programs kind of put a bad taste in his mouth after he gets fired from Nebraska for a 9-3 and three season. Yeah. You know, he's got it going at Ohio. He could pretty much wrote his own ticket. Why would you go anywhere else? And also with, with uh, La Monroe, I think this game for me is going to be known as the game that La Tech's AD muffed up. Uh, a lot of people point to this game and said the reason why La Tech is not in the bowl game at 9-3 and three is because La Tech didn't want to play Louisiana Monroe. And Louisiana Monroe, Monroe fans honestly feel that way. And that's a lot of uh, talk radio, a lot of uh, chat room chatter that Louisiana Tech was supposed to be in, be in this game and face Monroe. And just think about the economic impact that would have made them Shreveport to have those two local teams going head to head. Yeah, I mean they're they're not even fifty miles away from Shreveport with Rustin and, uh, and Monroe. So mm-hmm. when well, Matt and I discussed this before, that I don't know 
if anybody believes the story that they were holding out for, we wanted to see what happened with this bowl game. We wanted to see if the Liberty Bowl came knocking. I don't buy that. I think, like you said, Brandon, they really thought, well, there's this other bowl game. We just won't play the Independence Bowl. That'll be a fallback position. And Ohio stepped in and said, hey, we'll play. And now La Tech's sitting at home at 9-3. and three. I think an interesting side story with this one, it's not really much of a story. I wish it was more of one is that these are two evenly matched teams from two uh, of the better mid-major conferences this year. And I think yeah. that uh, if there was a, a mid-major cup, this would be the game because you've got uh, Ohio out of the MAC with the MACTION that everybody's been talking about this year. And they've had uh, an impressive year up there. Beat Penn State. You know, uh, not necessarily that was a big thing this year, but they beat Penn State. And then Louisiana Monroe, who beat Arkansas, should have beaten Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's better, the MAC or the Sun Belt? And I think this is the game where we can really judge that, and this could be the measuring stick for that game, for those conferences. Now, the next game, uh, 5.30 p.m., it's going to be in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. It's the Russell Athletic Bowl. Virginia Tech, the Hokies, 6-6, six and six, taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, 9-3. and three. Now, we all know... Rutgers was one of the four teams that finished in the lead for the Big East. But Virginia Tech was almost the first time since 1992 they were not bowl eligible. They just made it. What happened to Virginia Tech? Did they, did they get this invite just because you know Frank Beamer's their coach and somebody felt like they owed it to him, I guess? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I know they think Virginia Tech will bring people and people watch them, but Brandon, you said it earlier this year. Is it because they're young or... Is it just that the system's changed so much and Frank Beamer's got to change with it, or has time passed him by? What is it? I, I, Bud Foster's defense hasn't been a typical Bud Foster defense. Um, you look at uh, the quarterback, who's six six, goes about two sixty, can run it, can throw it. He took a step back this year. Uh, I mean, it's this team as a whole took a step back. And you got to kind of look over at Charlottesville but because the first time that, that was going to be my Mike question, London yeah. is out recruiting Virginia Tech in that Hampton but, Tidewater area. But here's the thing. you know, Virginia didn't have the year that you and I thought they were going to have, yeah. um, Brandon. But it, I was about to ask, is that the thing? Is Mike London really beating Frank Beamer's brains out in recruiting? Is yeah. that what's, what's really hurting him? Uh, that's, that's a lot of the problem. And if you're a Virginia Tech fan, you better be worried because your first game next year, Alabama in the Georgia Dome to start the season. That that one's going to be ugly. I'm sorry. So, And I'm talking grandma getting out the tub ugly. <laughs> so our next one to wrap up December 28th is the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas. Oh, by the way, Rutgers will win that game. Oh, yes. it, there's no question. If you were wondering that, you shouldn't because Rutgers will win that ball. They game. play defense. And they, they they hit people in the mouth. Right now, the uh, that's going to the Monique Car Care Bowl of Texas is going to be played in Reliant Stadium in Houston, Texas. That one's going to see the Minnesota Golden Gophers at six and six. It's their first bowl game since two thousand nine. Taking on the Texas Tech Red Raiders at seven and five. Another team that's got an interim coach because Tommy Tuberville left to go to Cincinnati. I want to ask you and Matt this, and I'll start with Matt first. How much of it do you think, when Tommy Tuberville left the way he did, do you agree with what some people say that, hey, look, they're hired guns, it's part of the business, or how much of it was, no, you should have told those recruits and everybody you were leaving? Well, I I think it was this way. I saw a couple articles that I've been reading recently that Tommy Tuberville got out while the getting was good. Because yeah, I think he saw the writing on the wall. He wasn't going to be as successful as Mike Leach was at Texas Tech. And the fan base, the alumni base, the boosters, the athletic department, how long were they really going to keep him around? So I think that it was um, it was preemptive, you know, you know, getting out, you know, while the getting was good, basically. Right. Uh, out of Lubbock. So Brandon, what do you think? Tommy Tuberville never fit in in Lubbock. I don't know about that. He and, and that's what I'm hearing. He never really fit in to the Texas Tech uh, culture. When he first got out of there, he said that we're going to have to run the ball and play defense. They curled him in and said, no, 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 no. Because the athletic director didn't believe that they can get that type of athlete to be able to do that. So 
he he kind of sold out on that. He he won, but he was not comfortable throwing the ball sixty times a game and playing so so defense. Well, and here's the thing: is the guy that really hired him was uh, was the the president of the university, Dr. Mm-hmm. Bailey. So, and he ended up going. He's an Alabama grad, went to Alabama, Alabama yeah, and then he ended up leaving not long after. So right. he wasn't there very long. So it makes you wonder if that was just the the culture yeah. uh, of them relating to each other. And my big question is. I wonder if Tommy Tuberville's, you know, dragged that Pinewood box he got in uh, Oxford, Mississippi with all his stops. If he took it to Auburn, took it to Lubbock, uh-huh. if he's taken it to Cincinnati. That box probably won't even have a top on it anymore. <laughs> and Because he wasn't going to leave Oxford, Mississippi except in a Pinewood right. box. And let's not forget, Tommy Tuberville, he will win the games he's not supposed to win, but he will drop a game somewhere that he is supposed to win. Like, he will beat Oklahoma, but then he'll turn around and drop one to Baylor and drop one to these other teams. The thing that is interesting, he's going to Cincinnati. Their last three coaches, first one, went to Michigan State. Second one, Brian Kelly, now at Notre Dame. And their third one's now at Tennessee. This may not be a bad decision for him because he could end up going from Cincinnati to a better school. Plus, who's going to be left in the Big East? Cincinnati's going to run that conference. That's the thing. You know... I think you were right saying they're going to drop a few. They shouldn't, but win some. They shouldn't. You know, their record this year was nine and three. Cincinnati fans just need to get used to it. Yeah, I think that's what they should expect. Because Tommy Tuberville will have winning seasons in Cincinnati. He'll win games. Uh, he'll take them to bowl games. But don't expect uh, a season like they had a few years ago with Brian Kelly before he bolted to Notre Dame, where they won all the games but lost to Florida yeah. in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. Now, December 29th, the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl in Fort Worth, Texas. You got the Rice Owls at 6-6, six and six, taking on Air Force at 6-6, six and six, Battle of the 6-6 six and six teams. Is this one of those games where it's like... Who cares? Yeah, is it a who cares or is it more like, you know, it's either this or infomercials. And the infomercials are kind of winning out a little bit. <laughs> this should be one of those games that... If you break a law, they should strap you to it to a chair and put a big sixty-inch TV in front of you and force you to watch it. <laughs> this is one of those this games. This is one of those games. That's I agree with games. Matt. This is one of those who really care games. Who cares? <laughs> now the next one is the Craft Fight Hunger Bowl in San Francisco. This is sounding like one of those. Yeah, games. this is sound- <laughs> to let you know how good it is. It's on ESPN too. So oh. all right. Yeah, we don't want to interrupt the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. So now you got Arizona State, the Sun Devils at seven and five, meeting Navy, the Midshipmen at eight and four. First ever meeting between teams, and I don't think people are really going to care to watch it. Either. I don't know. This one might be a fun game. I don't. It, I, it, I just one, don't know. <laughs> this is this is one of those where if you got the day off during the holidays, this one might be fun to have on the TV in the background and watch because, you know. The game might end up being a good game. You know, Arizona State has improved this year. Um, you know, Navy is, you know, had, didn't have the year that they wanted, but they were, you know, not bad. They beat Army for the, you know, you know, increased it to a decade and a half, I guess. So, should have lost that game, by the way, because all Army fumbled right there at the end. Definitely. Um, th- this is a fun game to watch. You know, it'll be uh, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a balanced attack versus the wishbone and see who wins out. Yeah, I'll either be playing Madden or Call of Duty. Hater. Uh, <laughs> y'all, y'all are haters with this one. This one might be interesting. Now, the one that's going to wrap it up that night, the uh, Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium, a throwback to the old Big East days. You got Syracuse Orange taking uh, at 7-5, and five, taking on West Virginia Mountaineers at 7-5. and This will be Syracuse... Last game as a Big East member, but we all covered it earlier this year. They're going to the ACC. When did they start playing basketball in Yankee Stadium? Uh, that, that actually <laughs> would be something I'd want to watch. That'd be kind of neat. And then West Virginia first season in the Big Twelve. How do you grade how West Virginia did their first year? Do you think they lived up to expectations, or was the bar set too high? I think it was about what what I expected. Uh, Dana Holgerson better learn how to teach his football team some physicalness. Because there is defense. I mean, there is the there's no physical element to that football team. They don't play defense, and when you're playing in the Big Twelve, you're playing against better athletes than you were playing against in in the Big East. 
You better start recruiting some defensive players. Or it's going to be a long, long well, tenure at it, West It's Virginia. interesting to see what happens you know, when they actually start playing teams that played a little bit of defense because – they came out of the gate looking like, man, they're going to win the conference. There's yeah. no one that can stop them. Geno Smith for Heisman. And then they played Texas Tech, and Tommy Tuberville said, this is one of those games that we probably should look, you know, that we shouldn't win, but we can go ahead and win, play the little defense, and then shut everybody up. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think West Virginia will probably – beat the ever-living crap out of Syracuse. I actually don't believe so. You don't think so? And the reason I say so is Syracuse is one of those teams that play def- plays defense. Syracuse's problem is they really can't score much. So this one has the potential of getting really, really ugly, or it has the potential of being kind of close. And if it's close, I like Syracuse. Hmm. Now, the Alamo Bowl, I was actually wrong. That's not the last one for December 29th. They've actually got about five or six that day. Alamo Bowl, San Antonio, Texas. We've got the Texas Longhorns at number 23, 8 and 4, taking on number 13, Oregon State Beavers at 9 and 3. Little interesting fact for you guys. Texas is 2 and 0 against Oregon State in bowl games all time. Oregon State is 2 and 0 and has never lost a bowl game in the state of Texas. So, I don't know if that'll have anything to do with it, but where do you see this one going, Brandon? I can't see Texas is one of those teams I don't even know where to start. You, they are the like the biggest underachievers in college football. All the recruiting classes. Is it time for Mac Brown to step down? Is it? Um. Probably. I think he just need. <laughs> I love that you had to pause on I that mean, one. I, 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 you know, and it makes me wonder: should he have stepped down a couple of years ago? I mean, very true. I, I, I don't like this Texas team. Sorry. I, I just I just don't but like There's nothing really wrong with this Texas team other than the fact that they got questions at quarterback. You know, I think that's the big question mark with this game is does Texas have a quarterback that decides to show up? That's true. And ever since the national championship game against Alabama, and I'm not saying this because I'm an Alabama fan, but it's like ever since that night and Alabama dominated, now they let up and – Texas came back, and then Alabama finally put them away. It's like ever since that game, Texas has not been the same team anymore. It's like Oklahoma has beaten them three years in a row, and two out of those three years, it's been blowouts. Well, a- after Colt McCoy went down, they've had questions at quarterback ever since. And it's and now and then he wants to institute the new offense, and he wanted to do the the power eye, and then he goes and gets the coordinator from Boise State that's running the trickery and the hook and ladder and the quadruple flea flicker pass. and well, I just don't and, get what he's doing. Well, and their quarterbacks have some confidence issues, obviously. You know, he announced that uh, Ash will be starting this game, but you know, don't be surprised if he gets yanked in the second quarter for Case McCoy. Uh, and, you know, because we've seen that all year. Well, and let's be honest, Ash, I mean, his, he's one last letter away from being really what he is, and that's, I'll leave the rest to the, your imagination. I just don't think he's that good, and I think he needs to quit playing games and stick well, with somebody. And it doesn't help him that the guy that he's competing against has the last name of McCoy. Yeah. Yes, that is totally true. But you're in Texas. You can't find a quarterback. It's Texas. So true. So true. The last game for that night, the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. I will probably just go to Buffalo Wild I think Wings this and the, watch this. the 30th, actually, Kyle. Uh, actually, no. It's at ten fifteen p.m. on the 29th. Oh. I thought the same thing, and then when I saw ten fifteen p.m., I was like, "Wow, that's kind of really late to start one on the 30th. Yeah. But it's gonna have the Michigan State Spartans at six and six taking on the TCU Horn Frogs at seven and five. Really shocked. I thought Michigan State was gonna do better this year, but they just they they looked like they were okay when they beat Boise State, but they just fell apart this year, and I don't know what happened. Where do you think it all went wrong? Is this called the Underachievers Bowl? I think so. <laughs> because people had high expectations for both of these teams, TCU and Michigan State. Um, Michigan State, I, I don't know what happened. And with TCU, injuries is what got TSU, and then you got the quarterback who was suspended, uh, Casey Paul Hall. So, I it's going to be real interesting. Well, the thing with – uh, with both of these teams is that I don't know if it was necessarily that these teams underachieved. I think that they were victims of a lot of a 
you know, a lot of competitiveness and underachieving conferences. You know, the the Big Twelve underachieved, the Big E, uh, Big Ten underachieved, and I think that you know they were just a victim of you know playing some tough games. You know, I totally agree. But one thing I got to give TCU credit for, and we all said it, they finally got to play Texas. And they beat Texas. But you know the thing about TCU? Lamar said in the beginning of the year, TCU is going to make teams in the Big 12 win ugly. And they did it. The thing about that Texas-TCU game is I was sitting there that night going, this just isn't right. It's not right that I'm sitting here and watch that game. And here's should the have been Texas It should have been Texas, Texas A&M. Texas because it was the night that you would expect Texas and Texas A&M to play. And it's just it didn't feel right. Yeah. Hopefully one of these days we'll go back to having that where they do play each other, but I just, I don't know. Tell you what, I regret not seeing that this year because Texas A&M would have worn Texas out. Yeah. I totally agree. When we come back, we're going to discuss all the New Year's Eve Bowls, the New Year's Day Bowls, and we're going to get into the BCS Bowls. And Matt and Brandon, also, we're going to recap who they think is their AP Coach of the Year and... Who was the best team and who was the biggest letdown? Come on back and join us in the locker room. We're covering the bowl games. You need to be here.